Good morning, dear friends. It is a rainy spring day here in London, and today it's my day off, so I'm taking things slowly and enjoying a peaceful day at home. On rainy days like these, the city becomes a lot more quiet, and in some areas even quite peaceful, which is unusual. And so I really enjoy these rainy days when the pace of everything and everyone slows down, even just for a couple of hours. In such a loud and busy world, peace is something that can be challenging to find especially if you are a more sensitive individual. However, I've come to learn that a peaceful life can also be created over time, even in a busy city. It has taken me many years to find my own rhythm here, and ways of creating my own sense of peace. But in the process, I have discovered so much more about myself and found so much inspiration and love for my everyday life in this busy city that now feels like home. It is a very grey and very rainy day here in London today, but that's okay um, because I thought that today we could sit down um, with a cup of tea and have a chat together. Um, and today I wanted to chat with you about how to create a more peaceful life um, and how I am in the process um, creating slowly a peaceful life for myself and the kind of things that I am implementing um, in my life to be able to live more peacefully, um, more stress-free and just um, better in general for myself. A good couple of weeks ago, a good while ago now, I had posted a video um, where I said that I felt very much like um, I identified as being a highly sensitive person and I very much felt that way about myself. Um, and since doing some other reading and research, um, I've understood that it is, um, there is definitely a spectrum <laughs> to this, all this kind of stuff, um, and it's definitely not black and white. And that, for example, um, you can be an introverted person um, and be highly sensitive, um, like me, or you can also be a more of an extroverted um, person and also be highly sensitive. So there is definitely there is definitely no black and white, and it is very different for everyone um, and how everybody feels. After that video, I was so overwhelmed and surprised at the huge amount of people who had responded um, to my video in the comments and in messages and saying how much they uh, resonated with, with everything that I was talking about um, regarding myself and um, just that they really felt a very similar way. It was really wonderful to know that uh, there are firstly so many other people like me, um, that I wasn't alone and um, that there are people who felt the same way and that also we had a lovely space where we could talk about the, these kind of things um, in a nice, safe um, kind of environment. So um, I am very grateful for all your messages and comments and it was so lovely to, um, to read them all and to connect with, with some of you there as well. And so 
Today I have written a little list of things that I want to talk about that came to my mind when I was thinking about um, what kind of things have have and are, are helping me to live a lot more peacefully. One of the first things that I think really helped me um, what, once I started realizing that this is this is who I am was to actually just accept accept it. It was the acceptance that this this is the way I am. I am more of a sensitive kind of being and I I do get overwhelmed, overstimulated quite quite quickly maybe compared to some other people and that I, I do need this time, time alone and that it is very beneficial for me um, and that it is okay and that there is nothing wrong with me and that I do not need to change anything um, about myself to be you know to um, work better or be better or be more successful and also uh, I began to understand kind of my own triggers um, things that affected me and how I can try to avoid them in order to feel um, more peaceful and less stressed as you may know there are so many things happening in our world right now it is quite a overwhelming and has been for a long time a very um, kind of scary place. There's lots of scary things happening right now, lots of negative things um, unfortunately and these kind of things can um, really affect someone like myself um, and if you are more of a sensitive person you maybe feel the same way but for me for example I cannot spend too much time uh, watching the news. In fact I barely ever watch the news in general. I of course do want to know what is happening. I like to stay informed and I, I do check um, the news on the internet from time to time to make sure I know what is going on. But I cannot, for example, um, watch the news regularly because it really affects me and um, these stories and things that are happening um, in the world, it, it can really stay with me for for an entire day and be in the back of my mind and can affect affect my my whole day sometimes. So I know that when when I if I spend too much time in that area, I can feel quite stressed and overwhelmed and depressed sometimes. So <laughs> I try to not do that. Uh, I obviously stay informed, but I try to also focus on more positive things that are happening around me. And then the other thing is I don't do, for example, scary films or things like this. Um, they just don't work for me. And I know that about myself. Um, I won't be able to sleep. Um, I'll be thinking about things that I saw. Um, so I definitely do not do very well with anything like that. And so now that I know this about myself, I try to um, limit those things, stay away from those things if I can, um, and focus on other more positive things if possible. The other thing that I would consider a trigger for myself, although more of a mild trigger perhaps, is actually my, my environment and more specifically my, my home environment. And I have found that um, this can really affect how I feel. I think, I think our homes are such important places. Um, some of us spend a lot of our time in our home and some of us come home in the evening after work and it, you know it is so important I think to come to a home that is welcoming, that is peaceful um, and relaxing and has a relaxing environment and I, I think it's really important and I think having a tidy home, a clean home, um, it, can, it can really affect how we feel. I know it really affects me. Since we live in a small apartment, it can get quite cluttered and um, busy um, fa fairly quickly. So uh, in my experience, when this happens, I, I do tend to feel more overwhelmed, more stressed. And so, as I've mentioned in a previous video, by decluttering our home from time to time, going through things, that really helps to make the whole atmosphere so much more peaceful. And I know that it makes me automatically feel so much better and so much more peaceful. So I think that that can make a big difference sometimes to, um, to our mental state. So I think that is definitely something to consider. 
And so the second thing I wanted to talk about was the idea of boundaries and um, creating boundaries for yourself. And I think that this is extremely important for living a more peaceful and stress-free life and also just for anybody in general, but I think especially if you are a more sensitive individual like myself, perhaps, um, this can be very important, I think. And the idea that you can create um, boundaries with both people, um, but also things in your life. For example, with people, it is, you know, not trying to people please, um, perhaps. Um, that was one of my things that I, I realized I needed to I needed to stop doing and that was something that was really hard for me and not um, saying yes to things and situations that deep down you actually truly want to say no to but you say yes anyway. This was something that I had through throughout my entire life, <laughs> to be honest, and with my career, with um, being a dancer, it was always about, you know, doing better, um, constantly showing yourself, um, trying to impress certain individuals um, in the industry, um, and it was constantly about people pleasing. So it, it really took me a very long time to finally understand that I needed to start saying no and prioritizing what, what I really need and what I really want to do. I actually realized that by doing that, when I do say um, yes to certain things, I am saying it more wholeheartedly and I am more happy and joyful and I am more fulfilled when I'm doing um, the things that I actually say yes to instead of saying yes to things that actually I know won't serve me. Um, so I think that is definitely something to keep in mind is the idea of people pleasing and kind of knowing where is your cutoff point, um, where, where do you need to draw the line. But also you can create boundaries with the things in your life. So once again, coming back to the home, um, what kind of things you have in your home and the amount of things you have in your home, perhaps. For me, it, it was also something to consider living in a small space. I know I have created certain boundaries for myself um, with the things I will have uh, in the home and, um, and also how those things make me feel. Do they bring me joy? Do they make me happy? Um, are they useful, you know? So I think that is also something um, that can be considered, um, is boundaries with, with things. But also, I think boundaries with things like work and social media, um, your phone, your computer, I think those can be very important um, things to consider boundaries with. I have found that it, creating boundaries has been incredibly useful to, to have that cutoff point where um, I say, okay, that's, that's enough. I've done what I need to do. And to be able to have that balance, which I am constantly working on. <laughs> I am definitely not perfect at it yet, but it is something I am keeping in my mind. It is something that is really important um, for a peaceful life. So creating boundaries. And then I think the third thing that is really really been helping me to live more peacefully is to actually try and incorporate as many peaceful activities and hobbies and things that I love uh, into my life and into my days and prioritize some time for those things as well because I know that they are vital for both my physical health, my mental health, my emotional well-being. And so, for example, one of those things that is really important to me is nature, being out in nature. So I try to come out into nature whenever I can, possibly. I also walk to my workplace. Um, I am very fortunate that I can do that, of course. And so going to work, I walk through a big local park that I have here and I just really try to, I try to leave the house early, for example, so I can have a bit more walking time. And then I walk home on the way back as well. So I do try to get out into nature as much as I possibly can. And then all my other activities that also bring me so much joy. So working with plants and delving into my passion for herbalism and folklore and studying all of that um, brings me so much 
so much peace and joy and brings out my kind of childhood spirit, uh, my childhood curiosity, and I can really um, delve into that creative side of myself. It is a time where I prioritize um, doing those things and spending time with my hobby and zoning out and detaching myself from, from work, from other things, and really finding time for those things that I know are so vital for my um, emotional um, well-being. The other thing I'm trying to do more of, <laughs> which sometimes I am still finding difficult, but I'm trying to be better at, is meditation and also doing a bit of journaling. Meditation I've been trying to do every morning for a good couple of months now. Um, I am definitely not the best at it. I am very much a physical um, kind of active type of person <laughs> who finds it very very hard to sit still but it's that it's that saying you know that says um, if you don't have five minutes to meditate, uh, you need five minutes to meditate or something like this. But I think that is so true. Um, and especially for me, I find that if I take that five to 10 minutes to just sit still in the morning and I'm trying to be better at that because I know that actually those five, 10 minutes can sometimes affect my entire day and how I feel for the rest of the whole day. And then the other thing um, that I am trying to get better at is journaling. And what I found has really been helping me is to, at the end of each day, to just sit down and write just a couple of things, two, three things that I am simply grateful for that day. I have found that this very simple activity is so fulfilling. And I find that when I write those things down, I am, I am really there in the moment. I am thinking about those things and I am truly appreciating those things that I have and that I'm so grateful for and that I, I shouldn't forget to be grateful for. And so this is something I am really trying to get better at. It has also been creating routines, um, routines that are gentle, not too rigid, certain routines that I put into my day, certain small um, disciplines, if you will, um, that have come over time and that I have adapted to my own self, what I am capable of, the time that I have um, to give, uh, and prioritize the things that are really, really important to me that I know will give me a more peaceful state of mind and just a more peaceful day. Um, and the other thing is, of course, I, I stretch every day and I try to work out a couple of days a week. Um, sometimes it is different every week because obviously I, I have um, quite a lot going on. I'm running a school as well. So, um, but it is my physical health is very, very important to me. Always, always has been. And so I think creating these kind of little routines for myself. I know that I can change if I need to, but they are there and they are things that uh, I know will truly bring peace and calm to my days. And I think that creating little routines can be very, very beneficial. And I also do think that sometimes it's the smallest things um, in our life. They can make the biggest change sometimes to how we feel physically, mentally. For some people it can be going out and spending a bit more time outside in nature or it can also be simply just taking time to um, talk to yourself in a kinder way, in a more compassionate way and also to the people around you, um, people who you live with, people who you work with. I think that those things can also um, be very beneficial and create a much more peaceful life. And so I think these are the kind of things that I have been thinking of um, when I was thinking of putting this video together. There is most probably a lot more things um, that can be considered. So if you have any um, anything you wish to add, any uh, thoughts or uh, interesting uh, tips or things you want to add, please feel free to go ahead and write them in the comments below. Um, I would be so, so interested to hear and I'm sure um, everybody in this community will be so um, grateful to hear um, all of your tips and uh, things that you'd like to share. I think it's uh, something that can really help uh, all of us nowadays because we do live in such 
such a challenging, difficult world nowadays that is um, full of challenges and <laughs> quite a lot of turmoil recently. So um, I think that considering and implementing things into your life to make uh, to make your life more peaceful is an incredibly beneficial thing to do. I am constantly on this journey myself to try and live more peacefully and um, it, it really, all of the things I mentioned below have been truly very helpful to me so um, I hope they can help at least some of you um, as well and yes if you have anything else to share please please do share in the comments below and I would love to hear from you but thank you ever so much for watching and thank you so much for all of your support and I really hope to see you in the next video. Have a lovely day and a lovely week. Bye guys.